Hi everybody, my name is Tammy. I am an independent author and somebody who just really enjoys great stories. So on this channel, I talk about writing, books I've enjoyed, and lessons I've learned on my publishing journey. It's been a while since I've posted any new videos regularly, and a lot of that has been because I've been really busy with other things. And one of the things that I have been doing is doing in-person events as an author. Because I'm also an artist, I also have tried to sell some of my art and like my sticker designs there. And I've learned a lot along the way. I've only done four of these events so far. Three of them were a farmer's market that happened weekly and so I've done that three times and then I did a convention in Las Vegas. I posted a vlog earlier talking about my preparation for that convention and then after I got back I actually filmed some things that I learned from doing that. This video is going to change in a little bit and show footage that I recorded previously where I was talking about my experience at the convention and some things that I learned. But I wanted to pop in here at the beginning and do a little introduction and then also talk a little bit about the farmer's market. So I will put the stuff about the farmer's market at the end since I did that later, but let's talk about the convention a little bit and some of the things that I learned there. Today is Saturday, November 12th, so the convention that I did was last weekend. Overall, I had a really good experience. I did have a friend come up to help me out and just kind of sit with me and keep me company, and she kind of wanted to learn what it was like to do an event like this, so Michelle Winkler came up and we had a lot of fun together just hanging out. And it was really helpful just to like have somebody to talk to, have somebody to watch my table if I needed to go to the bathroom or do, or if I wanted to walk around and just stretch my legs, anything like that. So that is the first thing I would recommend is that if you can bring somebody with you to sit at your table, definitely do that. It makes a big difference. Now this did end up being kind of a smaller convention than what I had even expected. Like I knew it was going to be small, but it was really small and the turnout was just not great. <laughs> unfortunately. I did spend quite a bit of time walking around and talking to some of the other artists and like authors and people there and that really kind of seemed to be the general consensus. Nobody was doing super well on a financial level. I think everybody was kind of struggling to like make back their table fee and things like that. I did make back my table fee and about half of the hotel room that I paid for to stay there. That was not as much as I had hoped for but like I don't know, at least to make back the table fee was something. And I'm trying to look at it as more of a learning experience. So I think that's something else to keep in mind too when you do these events is that like you don't always know how things are gonna turn out. It might be super slow and it might not work out as well as you had hoped, but I think you can still kind of take advantage of just the opportunity to learn something or to network with other authors and artists who are there. Because it was my first convention, I did kind of mention that to a lot of the authors and artists that I talked to and they were really willing to like share ideas and tips and advice which I can use at the next convention I do and so that was really helpful. Another thing that I thought really helped me specifically and I know this isn't going to apply to every author but it was really nice for me to also have art that I was selling because a lot of the times the art would kind of catch people's eye and draw them in and then there were some people who were also readers and I was then able to talk to them about my books. Whereas if I had just had books, I'm not sure that I would have gotten as much attention. So I do think it's helpful to have something else or like something that will like draw people in. Even if you're not selling art, I think like having character art on display from your books or other kinds of things like that might kind of catch people's eye as they're walking through the aisles. The other thing that worked out really well for me was the bundles that I put together with the entire Secrets of Peace series. That was an idea that I had gotten from another author and that was really kind of eye-catching for people and they really enjoyed like how nicely it was packaged and so that ended up being a really good way to kind of just catch people's attention and let them know more about the books and then they were more willing to like commit to buying the whole series as opposed to just one book. Also with the display I do think it helps to have some kind of like vertical element. You know I had like those vertical um, cube things that I put my books in and hung my art on and that worked really well. I saw some people have like banners behind them like if they were just selling books that was a really good idea um, that vertical thing kind of helps catch people's eye another thing i learned was that it really is helpful to like have a good sales pitch down and really know what you're going to talk to people about as you're you know trying to get them to buy your books and stuff i had another author sitting next to me she was actually somebody that i met at a previous convention as well and we've kind of become friends and so 
I noticed that that was something she was really, really good at. She has this huge series that she's trying to sell and she just really has a good way of presenting all the information very clearly, but giving people all the information right up front. Whereas I was still trying to kind of figure that out and kind of floundering a lot. So I do think it's a good idea to like practice before you go. I think it's different when you're talking to people one-on-one -on -one too. You know, the more you can practice and kind of get that down, the better. The other thing that I frequently <laughs> forgot to do and why it was good to have Michelle with me was because I kept forgetting to give people my business card. If they, you know, if I started talking to them or if they were just kind of looking at stuff on my table, I a few times at the beginning just kind of let them walk away, but then um, Michelle reminded me to, you know, you should give your business card to people as they're coming by. And I was like, yes, I should. That's why I have those. I also think it helps to like start out with a very basic question. Like I think the question that the author next to me, Kayla, she was asking people, do you like fantasy books? Because all of her books are fantasy. And she's got this big epic fantasy series. I started asking people just very simply, do you like to read? Because sometimes they were stopping to look at my art. And also I have books in multiple genres, so I don't want to like specify one. But then if they, you know, answered yes, then I could start talking to them about, you know, what genres do you like to read? I have these books, some are fantasy, some are like science fiction. I have this little micro fiction collection that's really short and easy to get through if you don't have a lot of time to read. And then also if they're not big readers, I would ask them sometimes if they like audiobooks and just mention the fact that, you know, I have a couple of books that are available as audiobooks if they would rather check those out. Something else I learned from Kayla, she had these cards that had download codes for her eBooks so that they could go in and put that in and she could sell eBooks directly to them. So that means that I, I'm pretty sure she sees all of that money from the ebook sales and it's kind of an easier sell, especially where she has that big long series. It's an easier sell to get people to buy the ebook for, you know, $25 for the entire series as opposed to like the physical book, which are a lot more expensive. So that's something that I might do next time. I think she did those through like, I want to say book funnel. It is a really good idea to have cash because some people will want to pay with cash. So, you, you know, make sure you have like ones and fives and things like that, smaller bills to break down if you need to. I also just got the little free square reader. One thing that my friend Kayla suggested that I ended up doing was to go ahead and put the cash sales into the square reader as well. There's an option to do that. And that just makes it a lot easier to kind of keep track of everything that you're selling, especially because at the end of the day, we then had to pay taxes and calculate like what percentage of our sales we needed to pay in taxes. So that was helpful. I do want to do more events like this in the future, even though it didn't like it wasn't the most productive thing for me financially. But it was just like really validating for me to see people be interested in the stuff that I make, whether it was my books or especially my art. I am a much more confident writer than I am an artist. I always have been. And so like when people don't like my books or when people, you know, decide that my books are not for them, that doesn't bother me anymore, really. It's fine. There's still like certain criticisms that get under my skin a little bit and kind of get to me. But I also like really stand by my books and my writing and the decisions that I make when telling those stories. Whereas with my art, I feel like... <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with art a lot of the time. So I'm just very self-conscious about it. But I did have a lot of people walk by and like really enjoy my art and like kind of their faces lit up when they see it. And they thought that the stickers were really cute and they, you know, just made really nice comments and were like very warm and like, just nice about it and that made me really happy and, and I definitely think that if I do do another convention I will be putting up my art and my books as well just like I did this time. One more thing that I want to mention about doing conventions like this that I think is important that I didn't really know at first going into it is that you really want to consider like how many people are going to show up and kind of weigh that against how much you're going to end up having to pay for the table and then for any accommodations that you're going to need if you're going to be traveling out of town. Just as an example, I think the convention that I am planning to do in Salt Lake, I looked it up to try to figure out how many people go every year. Might have been 75,000. But having attended that one and seeing kind of what that looks like, that's a massive difference compared to the convention I went to in Las Vegas. 
I don't know exactly how many people would have been at the one in Las Vegas. It was much, much smaller. Like I would be shocked if there were even like 5,000 people there. There are websites and resources that you can use online to find out about different conventions that are coming up. And then sometimes they will list like how many people have attended in the past. So that's a good idea to check those out. I will try to pop some of those on the screen or put them in the description for you to check out too. And the other thing to keep in mind is that you wanna apply for these as early as you can. There were a couple couple of more that I researched that I wanted to do, but because this was kind of a last minute decision, I was applying to them really late and then I ended up not getting in. So I am kind of trying to keep a better eye on that this year and make sure to apply sooner when they open up for applications. All right, now let's talk about doing the farmer's market because like I said, I did do that a few times in December. So the farmer's market was also something that I kind of decided to do last minute, mostly because I wasn't even aware that we had a farmer's market until very recently. And even then I kind of wasn't sure about doing it because the farmer's market obviously draws a very different crowd than you might find at a convention. I write science fiction and fantasy, so it kind of makes sense for me to go to conventions where there are a lot of people who are very into science fiction and fantasy and kind of nerdy people who might be you know more likely to read books and, and enjoy the fan art that I have and things like that whereas at a farmer's market you kind of just get like a mix of anybody and everybody who decides to show up that day it is a lot of older people too um, especially because I live in a community where we have a lot of older people who will come down and stay for the winter and so I did the farmer's market in December so we we do have just like a lot of older people who are here right now for the season and honestly, that's not like specifically the demographic that I write for. A lot of my books are more YA and have content that I'm not sure would be like the most appealing to older readers. Not that older people can't read science fiction and fantasy, but I just, I think it's kind of hit or miss. It kind of depends. I was a little nervous about doing the farmer's market for that reason and not really knowing who would even be interested in my books. However, the table fee was really cheap for an artist table at my farmer's market. It was only like $35. So at that point, even if I sell just a few books, I've already made my table fee back. Something else you'll want to consider is that sometimes they do make you pay for like insurance. So at my farmer's market, I did have to pay for insurance, but that insurance was for the whole year, which was kind of frustrating because like I didn't find out about it until December. So I was essentially just paying for insurance for one month or three farmer's markets and it was $55. If they end up doing it again next year, then it would make more sense and it wouldn't be such a big expense when it's spread out across more time like that. I ended up not making as much money at the farmer's market as I did at the convention. However, I think it was actually more worthwhile to do the farmer's markets because I was there for a shorter period of time. It was only four hours on a Saturday and every day I did make back my table fee and by the end of the three weeks I had made enough to cover also the insurance and then a little extra on top of that. It is something that I'm planning to do next year. They're on like a hiatus right now because of the weather. I live in the desert and it is warmer. That's why we could do an outdoor farmer's market in December but it was really, really cold those three weekends. And I think that also kind of impacted how many people showed up. So that's another thing to keep in mind is like, what is the weather going to be like the day that you're doing the market? Because if it's cold and miserable, like a lot of people just won't come out. The last weekend that we did it was the nicest day. And I think because it was a nicer day and it was sunny and also it was the last farmer's market of the year, I think that drew more people out. And that was the best day that I had the three weekends that I did it. I also really liked the idea of doing something smaller like a farmer's market because it does give you an opportunity to kind of refine your sales pitch I guess and the way that you want to talk to people about your books and the way that you engage people as they're kind of walking by. It was just a really good opportunity for me to practice some of those things because I'm still not very good at it. It's still really hard for me to talk about my stuff and like sell my stuff but it is a good way to practice in kind of a more low-key less stressful kind of environment. Also it's a really good idea to remember to bring water water and snacks because you are going to be sitting there for a long time and you don't really want to be getting up and leaving your table too often because you want to make sure that you're you know talking to anybody who might come by who might be interested in your stuff and you know if you're sitting outside in the cold 
hand warmers are a lifesaver. Like I mentioned before, I think one of the best things that I got out of this whole experience was just like seeing people walk by and take an interest in my stuff. It was just really cool to see them, you know, some of them recognize characters that I had drawn or thought that my stickers were really kind of funny and interesting. I did have a lot of people stop by and talk to me about my books even if they ended up not buying one or weren't like super interested in the genre, especially at the farmer's market, there were a lot of people who thought it was really cool that I was like a local author. That's another thing that I would recommend doing if you're gonna go to like a local event. Make sure you tell people that you're like a local author. I didn't realize that that would be such a big deal, but I did have several people who came by who I think just assumed that I was there selling the books. It wasn't until we got talking that they realized that these are all my books that I wrote because when they found that out or when they would ask that you know oh you wrote these they would be like kind of surprised by that but also then like really excited for me and kind of more interested in the books. I do want to eventually get a banner but then I want to have something on there that I can put up like when I do the farmer's market specifically that says like local author and artist because that was something that seemed to be kind of a I don't know just a draw for people or a way to connect with them. Anyways if you've done in-person events like this I would love to know what your thoughts are so be sure to leave a comment down below and tell us anything else that you've learned that was really valuable if you have questions about doing in-person events, go ahead and leave that in the comment below too and either I will try to answer it or I'm sure there are other people who are far more experienced than me who can answer those questions as well. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will see you next time. Bye!